I like the way you move. Yeah. 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 I like your style. Five, six, seven, eight. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Welcome and welcome back to Dixon Politics. You've got the dynamic duo. You have me, Samantha. And me, Corbin. And we have a lot to talk to you about. Now, Corbin, I don't know how you feel about clickbait. Tell me. Okay. Well, long story short, I feel like it does you a disservice because you're expecting it to come in the first couple seconds, but they draw you in for 20 minutes. And then it's a snippet. Mm -hmm. It's a waste of time on the video. How do you feel? I think that it's absolute trash and I hate it. I don't like it. So you know what, Corbin? We've been teasing. Yes. For a little a little while now Haven't that we? we are going to be introducing our listeners to some new hosts. Ooh, I'm so <laughs> excited. Now let's let's look at it this way, all right? Yes. Dixon Politics has been around since Thanksgiving. So November, December, January, February, March. So like three months. We've been around for about a quarter now, right? Mm -hmm. And for the past three months, we've been looking behind the scenes at our analytics because we do have a senior vice president of analytics. His name is Ian. He is a daddy. (laughs) And he has been looking behind the scenes and telling me and Adriana what he's finding. You want to know what we've been finding? What have you been finding? Tell me. 94% of our listeners are men between the ages of 25 and 35. Wait, now this brings up a good question. What are we providing those men when they listen to us? It's funny you ask. So Dixon Politics slash I was recognized in public this week, Mm -hmm. which that's insane to me, right? And... The people who recognized us were men between the ages of 25 and 35. So I got to kind of, you know, talking to them and I said, you know, what is it about the show that you like? Mm -hmm. And they're like, honestly, it's like being a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. Like, we always wonder what women are saying, what women are really thinking, because, you know, it's becoming less and less, but there still is sort of a veil between what women will share with their friends and what they share with men that they're potentially trying to woo, impress, and or date. And right. so it's nice for us to just be a fly on the wall and really hear what you ladies talk about and, um, you know, hopefully encourage you to, to talk more you know, about politics, about current events, about movies and TV and film and all that stuff, but especially politics and current events, uh, you know, with us. I'm like, ooh, okay, daddy. All right. So. This got the looking, juices rolling. Mm, we've been looking behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Now, this is something that we've had in the works for a good few weeks now, but we are just now announcing it. Corbin. Okay. We have two new segments of Dicks and Politics to Ooh. announce. Can you give me some fanfare music, please? Da-na-na-na. Wait, no, that one's taken. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, no, let's not clickbait. Just tell them. We're too excited. All right, you guys. The first new segment that we are going to introduce to you is called It's bro time. It's going to be hosted by John, who's going to be on this podcast a little bit later to say hello, introduce himself. Uh, And it's also going to be hosted by Mike, whom you will have an end game interview with at the end of this episode. Mike and I dated for like a hot second. Now, these guys are fantastic and they are right in the thick of the sports industry and i'm not talking these guys don't sell shoes at Foot Locker. they do <laughs> not work at models like these are like sports professionals they don't mm-hmm. place well no i mean they do but not professionally they but they're in the professional sports industry the two of them are hysterical as you know i have a group chat for every right. segment and every show and the two of them all week i they talk about they felt back like a fly forth, on the wall honey forth. i felt like a fly on the wall in that group chat it was just they're so excited they're coming up with an agenda now that is going to premiere mm-hmm. next week so you guys stay tuned for it's bro time now, now the second one mm-hmm. now we don't you know we don't want to only celebrate the strong chiseled hairless, often hairless, sexy bodies of female and male athletes. We want to give everyone a little something. So we are also going to be presenting you with a segment called Game Over. It is all about video games and esports. I am so excited about this segment. I have hired 
my friend Stephen, who's a former colleague of mine, former coworker of mine, mm-hmm. uh, to lead this segment. He is going to be co-hosting it with Will, who's our creative director at WISP, and Ian, who's our senior vice president of analytics. These guys, again, in this group chat, it's hysterical. They've been talking for the past few weeks about all their favorite games, what they're looking forward to, what they think about all the games that came out this year, like, oh my god, Assassin's Creed, Odyssey, oh man. So, I am really, really excited. That show is going to be premiering in a few weeks. It's growing. I just, it's just growing. We're growing. We can't wait because we look behind the scenes and we see, you know, we see all this, this stuff. And, oh, and it's nuts because last week we noticed we had a huge spike in young men, in male mm-hmm. listeners between the ages of 13 and 17. So... Dixon Politics, we want to give you guys little snippets of information. We want to always tell you, you know, what's up and do it in a way that's fun. And you know what? It's not just about the ladies. It's not just going to be about the ladies anymore. We're also (laughs) going to be introducing you to the men. So, like I said, Mike and John are going to be doing It's Pro Time. And then Stephen, Will, and Ian are going to be doing Game Over. We can't wait, but Corbin... We have a full agenda. We need to get into what's burning. I don't even know if we're going to be able to put in the what's burning music because I'm just so bewildered. So... Tell me, because mm-hmm. I know you listen to NPR like I do, because we're 500 years old. Well, and here's the thing, because I think this is something you and I have talked about. NPR, call it what you want, and I know some conservatives may want to bash um, NPR because they think it's very liberal. But I think NPR does a real good job of trying to give both sides to the point. This is so what liberals I. believe. This is what the Democrat. Um, this is what liberals slash conservatives believe. Now, right. The recent topic. And on well, N- wait. You know what? I will also say, Michael Barbaro. I mm-hmm. think is very, very fair when he yeah. interviews people. He might have his opinions, right. but I think the way that he goes about doing these interviews, he is fair and respectful, and he researches before he goes in for everyone, you mm-hmm. know? And and what I also really appreciate is that he's very careful about his tonality, you mm-hmm. know? It's very much like, this is Tuesday, I'm Michael Barbaro, and he just goes in and he presents the news. Whereas, you know, you have Mika and Joe on Morning Joe and Willie <laughs> Geist and all those folks that are... You know, they're sharing their opinions, which I also love. I love Morning Joe, but I really appreciate Michael Barbaro. He just says it straight and he gets to the point. And then, you know, on we go with our day, scratching our heads. So, Corbin, tell everyone what happened this week with President Donald J. Trump. Uh, So uh, after the government shutdown, there was a huge debate whether or not he would declare a state of emergency to get the funds that he needed for the wall. Now, which is so reckless. Sorry, well, but it is. In, it's reckless. Well, in, in, to, the, in, <laughs> in, to, in to that point, uh, you know, for, okay, to, to, to track it back, because you know me, I like to get off topic, but I have to stay focused here. The huge debate has been ever since uh, his State of the Union address, he said uh, he was asked in an interview, Mr. President, what are you going to do about the wall? What are you going to do about... Um, making good on your promise. It will get done one way or another. If it ha- even if it have to be done through a government shutdown, I don't want to do it, but I'm paraphrasing what he's saying, but mm-hmm. I don't want to do it, but I will because it's within my right. Now, since making that statement, uh, I think three or three, two plus weeks ago, mm-hmm. he's now acting on it and now it's being, being, being put in motion. Now, it has to go through a chain of command before it actually happens. Now, to right. my understanding, before a state of emergency can actually be declared with good reason, Mm-hmm. It has to go through the House and has to go through the Senate. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the Democrats control, let's remind the people, the Democrats control the what? The House. The House. So, and the House controls the purse springs, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Mm-hmm. So now you know that they're already going to be no one and done. Now it's going to go off to the Republicans. Now the Republicans have to think long and hard for a future tense. How will this look? Because as you and I are always talking about, it's not so much what we do now. It's what our kids and our grandkids will ask us. Why would you do that? Exactly. And then, and then that looks back, looking back on history, how foolish that looks. And that's what Aurora was saying about Brexit. She's like, you know, the the pensioners are, are sort of like hip, hip, hooray. But yeah. my generation is like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Why the hell would you do this? So, yeah, it's going to be the same thing for us if this goes through. So, any hoodles, continue. I'm, I'm trying to not hyperventilate again. Right, right. Well, and... and um, to not deviate too much dealing with the uh, with the wall, you and I, we watched a really good, uh, it's called Middle Ground. Yes. On Jubilee. I thought it was very good. And we, and they, we were watching an episode talking about uh, can Trump supporters and immigrants see eye to eye. And, and this was on YouTube, by the way. Yeah, so this you was on YouTube, by the up. way. 
there's this one woman <laughs> and Sam paused it. <laughs> oh, and I <laughs> and started yelling. <laughs> and this woman said, and the question was, do you feel safe with your beliefs? And this this uh, this Caucasian woman said, I, I don't feel safe being a Trump supporter. I don't feel safe making my merchandise of magma. When I go out into the street, sometimes I, be, I fear for my life. Now, to, across from her, there was this... Uh, was it a jihadist or was it a Muslim woman? I can't remember. A, je- a Muslim woman who was wearing a beautiful hijab. And yeah. she's like, okay, well, what, then what that's... What you feel yeah, is what that's, we've been feeling our entire life. It's a teeny slice of it. But yeah, that's how we feel our entire lives. And oh, mm-hmm. and, and then the, and to the that right lady of her, was, there's this young man. He, he was like, you know, I was illegal, but I became legal for, in this country. And he was mm-hmm. elaborating on the fact of what it takes to go through the process and what it takes. And then this woman chimes in and says... But that's not what I'm saying. That's not what it's about. You can be here. We just want it be, to be done legally. The injustice that you faced in your country is what is happening if we don't have a fair due process. And to your point, yeah. you said it's already happened. Well, that okay. So the what? So hold on. Let me let me water that down because I think people are probably sitting in their cars like, wait, what? 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 Okay. So this woman said, across from this man, the young man said, the reason why I fled my country was because there was so much violence and there was so much crime that I I and my family we wanted to leave that so that we could come here and we could work and we could you know carry out our lives get an education contribute and and live basically right. and the woman's response was well if we don't have legal immigration then that is going to be brought to this country and I absolutely lost my mind because it is already here, some of the most dangerous people are white Americans, U.S. citizens who are entitled, wealthy, and live a life free of consequence. Do mm-hmm. not tell me that, oh, well, in order to make this a nonviolent country, we need to have legal immigration. We do need legal immigration. I completely agree with that. But to say that the only source of violence in the United States is coming from illegal immigrants. Uh, no. Try again and then please keep your mouth shut and don't open it again until you have something educated to say. I, cu- I couldn't. I couldn't. So to, I was yelling. So, so to wrap, <laughs> she, was, she was. So to wrap this up, um, you know, we had, watched a similar, uh, we had watched a similar interview talking about dealing with law enforcement. Now, that was talking about a whole other thing uh, versus, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter and... Um, and law enforcement and to mm-hmm. into this point it was basically elaborating to the fact that um we have more crime happening within the u.s than when than, than we do have uh than we have coming in there there mm-hmm. were more school shootings there were more uh bombings mm-hmm. and while yes there may be some immigrants who are coming in and doing illegal activities I, I don't think that matches up or sizes up with the level of injustice that's been happening within our own country and within mm-hmm. our own counties within our own cities but anyways to bring it back to focus, Ugh. I think from the liberal standpoint, as many of them believe that this is not the proper way to go about legal immigration. This is not the proper message that we want to send. While the conservative standpoint is for those who do, who are Trump supporters, believe that he needs to make good on his promise. This is what he promised us. And, they, and they're not really looking at the overall picture, which is kind of scary to me. Very scary. It's very scary. And, you know, I, I will, uh, I'll say that I personally have gotten a lot of crap on this uh, on this podcast for not being political enough. So I hope that my prior statements a moment ago were political enough for you. And I can also tell you that within, I think it's, I'm trying to think of exactly when it's going to air, but I did an interview um, with a friend of mine who voted for Trump and continues to be a Trump supporter. And we talk all about what led to his decision and, you know, why sort of just talk about it. You know, why do you stand behind your decision? How were you raised? You know, tell me about your work life. Tell me about your family structure, so on and so forth. So that's going to be coming out in a few weeks. So what's next on the list to talk about? Well, the wall also made an appearance at the Grammys. Um, that what's that woman's name? I, Uh, I, trying so, not to even remember her name sylvia joy i'm, I'm looking up now Singer. something like that she showed up dressed as the wall to the grammys now look 
I like I I don't care. I don't care what you wear. Um wear whatever you want. But you know, it's it's so hard. All right, wear whatever joy, you want. Joy do what you want. Yeah, like say express your opinions, whatever, that's fine. But I don't know. Right time, right place, wrong time, right place. What do you think? Uh I do think people have, or a lot of uh, celebrities or people in the business have used award shows as a time to spread their message, whether it be liberal or, or uh, Democrat, uh, liberal or conservative. And, you know, I, I kind of have to look at it from a double standpoint. If, if a liberal is going to go ahead and advocate for AIDS or if, okay, let's say this, if, if Elizabeth Taylor, now give granted, this is a whole different scenario, but so if Elizabeth Taylor is going to go on the Academy Award show in 1993 and being honored with a lifetime achievement for her humanitarian work to promote AIDS, then to say it is wrong for someone to go ahead and promote the wall mm -hmm. 25, 30 plus years later, <sighs> are, are, we voicing someone's, are we voicing someone's freedom of speech? I don't know. But to your point, yes, there is a time and a place and there's a right way to go about it. And I, you just have to recognize not everyone's going to agree with your opinions. Now, I think mm -hmm. you should be respectful of that. I may not like it. I don't have to agree with it. Right. That is your choice. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, I'll, what else I will say? What I think really bothers me about, about her is she's so defensive. You know, she was in one of those videos on Jubilee that we watched. She was yeah. in that. And she oh, was do extremely. All, do all agree? Yeah, she was very, very um, trite. Um, which is, you know, your own choice, however you want to present yourself, that's fine by me. But she's very defensive. And yeah. for me, I look at this from a psychological standpoint. When I notice that people are getting defensive, I am less likely to believe whatever it is that they're saying. And that's just the way it is. You know, I know that criminal, uh, you know, not criminal investigators, but, you know, cops would, would feel the same way. Interviewers would believe the same thing. Like, the second you notice someone is getting defensive, you are less and less likely to not only believe what's coming out of their mouth, but you're less and less likely to believe that they actually agree with what they're saying, right? And mm -hmm. so if you're going to share your opinions, stand in them. You know, the message that I have for, what's her name, Joy? Yeah, Joy. So the message that I would have for Joy is, hey, you feel really passionate about this. You've clearly done your research. And this is coming from a place that is well thought out and from deep within your heart, girl, stand in it. Yeah. You don't need to get defensive. We're here to listen. Like Corbin said, we may not fully agree with, you know, how you feel or what you think, but stand in it and be proud of it. Own it. Don't be so defensive because if you can sort of soften a little bit, maybe let your guard down and, you know, maybe just, I don't know, massage your tonality a little bit. I'd be more likely to be like, you know what? In some ways, maybe she's got a point. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Now, Camila Cabello. Who, oh, bitch? The Grammys. It was saucy. It was that hot. set. Mm. First of all, it was that very set. West Side Story, was it not? Very West Side Story. And what I just, I mean, the set, like, I just want to give a shout out to the people that designed and built that actual physical set. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. And what I also really thought was cool was the lighting was on point. Ooh. All the different lighting they had in every room and yeah. the colors. Man, that was, it was just, oh my God, it was unbelievable. And the choreography, oh ooh, you God. know I love, you know I love a some good, good kickball choreo. Change. A little kickball change, a little grapevine, I'm not going to hate on it. You want to give me a kick? I'll take it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought that Ricky Martin was great, oh. and I thought that Jay Balvin was great. I just, I uh, was so, I was so proud. I was so enthralled. I, 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 I think that was a huge message for the Latin community, and I think they absolutely, did them justice. Absolutely. And I love that Latin music, especially this past year, as well as what's coming out now, has woven all those great mm -hmm. Latin beats have been woven into hip-hop and into pop. And I love that because you know my mm -hmm. favorite style of dance is the samba. Ooh, mm -hmm. you give me a good samba roll, girl, and I am there. I'm ready for it. I just, I thought it was fantastic. I'm so proud of Camila. You know, I said this to you yesterday when we watched the clip back, and I'll say it again now. You know, when she first left Fifth Harmony, I thought, oh, geez. Well, we who the hell does she think she is? Because I love Fifth Harmony. 
and especially I'm obsessed with Lauren. Oh mm-hmm. my God, she is my favorite. Anyways, Anna Alley. Anyways, so then a few months after she leaves Fifth Harmony, Camila mm-hmm. gets up on stage and she performs crying in the club and she went all out for that performance costume set lighting everything she always sings live and Mm -hmm. she did it in front of the whole world and the girls from fifth harmony were there that takes some guts some serious guts but look at how she has flourished she's grown not just her but all of them all the women from fifth harmony you know who we need to give a shout out to citizen queen our new obsession okay now you know I think acapella is one of the uh, it's, it's one of the forefronts in, in vocal because I think to have that level of talent to have that level of ear training, I think it's incredible because you know me I I will still mm-hmm. stick on a melody line to save my life. Mm-hmm. But these girls, Corbin does not harmonize I've every not single time we well, sing. You guys. Like it takes me forever. <laughs> but these girls, I mean, their first video or their first major breakout into the business in terms of a group was um, an evolution era of girl group. Uh, oh my god popular girl group songs it's they like a 13 a- minute video we didn't yeah. move it's so good and they did it in the same <laughs> side note they filmed it in the same location that beyonce did her love on top video mm-hmm. yeah. i'd be curious to see how these girls what their first album comes like i'm curious to see how they how how even how they grow because as we were talking about ariana grande are people who grow because mm-hmm. uh, she did an interview with uh, Zach Sang, I think is what it was, because we watched it yesterday. And she yes. gave a really good, well-informed speech. Finally! Uh, Corbin, do you think that she maybe listened to Dixon Politics and she heard our uh, cries? Listen. Because I, we've talked about Ariana a lot on this show. And a comment that all of us made was that we think mm-hmm. she has such an important message. Oh, Truly. Sure. And I said, and, I said, I'd be curious to see how she grows in the next 10 to 15 years. Mm-hmm. Either as a as a wife to some man, or as a mother to some like I would be curious to see how she grows because I, I you know me I'm not a huge fan of her in general but I do like some of her music but mm-hmm. I that that interview really changed my mind about her and I was like yeah. and the reason we brought this up is because Ariana Grande she won the Billboard Music uh, Woman of the Year award mm-hmm. and she had over a month to prepare a speech. And what happened? She got up on stage and it was just, oh my God, I can't believe this. This is so crazy. Like, I know you'd like, you know, you'd look at what's happening and like, you know, my career and you'd be like, oh my God, like she's on top and whatever. But like, honestly, like my personal life is like- In, in shambles. shambles. And uh, oh my God, I just, oh my God, I can't, it was just I very, can't, oh my God. It was just very and I'm like, come on, yeah, come on. And I realize, I know, I know, and she's spoken openly about this. I know she has anxiety. So do I. So do more than half the people that work for WISP. Like we totally get it. And she had just gone- Hadn't she just gone through the breakup with Pete? Yeah. I believe. So I completely understand that she was shaky. But again, the reason why we push her on the show is because we really do think not only is she hugely talented, but we really think she's got something to say. And I was so thrilled to see that interview with her because she was passionate. Mm -hmm. She was not defensive. Her Mm -hmm. answers were really well thought out. And I was so impressed it looks like she's doing much better than she was and now a few months ago she is a grammy winner yes she won i think best pop vocals if i'm not mistaken oh my now, god on that note of mm-hmm. what being well spoken someone else who we think is so talented but has a long way to go in terms of well not a long way to go but could step up her speech game is cardi b and i felt really bad for her at the yes. Grammys because here she wins this huge award this is such a huge deal she wins um best rap album and the first female to get that and she can't even live in that moment and people already having bringing up the Nikki beef. And I'm like, uh, guys, are you serious? Yeah. That, no, I it, mean, uh, at 26, she is a mother. She has sold over millions of records. Mm-hmm. And she, she, and she, and I remember she did an interview with ABC. This was um, ABC News um, post um, either before the Super Bowl or after the Super Bowl. She was saying, I don't have the same agenda that I have when I was 20, even 24. Mm-hmm. I just want to be at home with my kid. Here I am traveling. I'm working now to support my family. I just yeah. want to be with my, I don't want to go to the club. No, just, she just I wants felt, to go home and hang out with culture. I felt so bad for her. Cause I was like, are you serious? Why are you trying to pit these two against each other? And then Nikki clapped back <sighs> at the, um, uh, at the BET because someone on the EB, uh, on e, uh, BET's, um, uh, uh, PR tweeted out something about, uh, 
uh, Cardi B snatch, uh, snatching Nikki's lace front or snatching like her victory winner. Oh, calm down. Been. First of all, that's distasteful. And oh. I realize that everyone is like, oh, ha, ha, ha. But it's not, it's not funny. And no. you know what? I can see it from both of their points of view, right? I totally can. Because Nikki has been in, and I love Nikki. She has been in this game a long time. And she really paved the way for other women like Cardi to really come in and assert themselves and use their voice and just elbow those men right out of the way, sit them down in their chairs and create music. So yeah. I can see why it would be upsetting because essentially they do compete with each other. So it's, it is in a way like the old phrase, like, oh, you're taking food off my table. I totally get that, right? But I also see where Cardi's coming from because she looks up to people like Nikki and she looks up to people like, like Missy Gaga. and Mary J. Blige and Gaga and all these other women that are just like, men, sit down, get out of my way. I am creating my music, my way. Thank you for the, thank you for the studio time. Now <laughs> get out of my way. Yeah. And for her to not be able to enjoy this unbelievable moment, not only in history, but also in her, her personal life and in her professional life, to me, breaks my heart. I, but going back to what we were saying about interviewing, right? Mm -hmm. I really hope that Cardi finds a way to still remain true to herself because Cardi is funny. Yeah, she, she is. is quick. She's funny. She's clever. But... I do think that she needs to remember that um, if you want to be sort of a star within your realm, then you need to be true to you. Yeah. And people are going to speak the same sort of language as you, you know, same slang, all those nuances, all that. But if you want to be a world star and you want to be not accepted, I guess maybe just adored and respected yeah. by people on a global level... You do need to keep that in mind. Fiercely stay the same. Fiercely stand in who you are. Mm -hmm. But find a way to express yourself that maybe um, other people will be able to digest. You know, I love that word. Um, <laughs> but again, this is something that comes with age. She's 26 yeah. years old. I did not talk like this when I was 26. <laughs> well, actually, I kind of did. But, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, we all find we all find our voice. We all find our way. But congratulations to Cardi and Nikki. Look, girl, we love you, and we're waiting to see what else you come out with because you are fabulous. And congratulations to Ariana Grande and that incredible video. Congratulations to Camila Cabello to all the other nominees and winners. I think that the Grammys really got it right this year. Um, and, wait, wait. Oh, I have oh, one, oh. I have, now in terms of staying in your truth, I have one little bit. One little bit. Heavens. I'm not going to talk about this too long. Okay. I, I watched J Lo's uh, performance this morning. Um, mm. I have mixed feelings about it, mm -hmm. only because while yes, it was good, I don't think it was great because I do think there's something to be said for, especially in my line of work. We always talk about not taking roles away from other people if that's mm -hmm. not the story to tell. I mean, you remember the big controversy with uh, Sierra Boggess in this concert for West Side Story that happened mm -hmm. uh, last year. That's not your. That's not. That's not your role. That's not for you. Let someone of that background do it. Right. I do think there were plenty of Motown artists that were at the Grammys. Better yet, I would have recommended. Why not they bring um, uh, "Ain't Too Proud" or the Motown revival of Broadway? Why not let them perform a Motown tribute? I was. Hmm. Uh, you know. I can't. I mean, hmm. I can't. I can't bash J Lo too much, but I just felt hmm. like they could have well, hmm. done it better. They yeah. So here's what I'll say about Jennifer Lopez. She's one of the hardest working women in the industry. Oh, There's no months. doubt Five about it. Months. I mean, I don't even know when that woman has a chance to even sleep. Um, is she even so, human? Mm, yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> I used I did a job for her. I I did her um, I did her penthouse down in Flatiron, and she's. Mm. You know what I loved? It was doing that home for her was really interesting because it was so clear how much she loves her children and mm -hmm. how much, um, you know, she really loves her family. She really goes above and beyond within her own home to not only have like a bunch of different snacks and healthy foods and whatever, but like the way that she decorated her home, it was so cozy and it was thoughtful and each kid like their bedroom was just so indicative to them I think that every parent you know does that for their child and um it was just I don't know I really I I got a good glimpse of her when I when I 
dinner house. But anyways, um, you know what I would love to see J-Lo hmm. do? But. Because she is so talented. Now, J-Lo has said this herself. She does not have a strong voice. You know, she is not Beyonce. She is not Christina. I would love so much to see J-Lo just her and a spotlight. And I would just love to see her sing little snippets of all of her hits. And, mm. then, with, and then with one guy, I want to see her dance. I want to see her tango. I want to see her salsa. I want to see her cha-cha because she can really dance. But the thing about J-Lo is she's just, she's so huge and she wants to give everyone a little bit of everything. And oh my God, can she do it? But sometimes with some of her numbers, like I think it was the AMAs a few years ago, she did that huge opening number with those bizarre, like flesh color body suits. And it was just too much. She yeah. tried to do too much. I would say to J-Lo, we know how talented you are. We know how thoughtful you are, articulate, how family-oriented. We know how gorgeous you are. Show us, strip it down, and remind us why we fell in love with you in the first place. It was your ability to act and emote through your songs, and it was your dedication to your craft and your first craft which was dance. That's what I'd love to see from her. Ooh, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. But look, we're taking up too much time. We've got we've to take a second here because we need to let Jonathan slide right in mm -hmm. and introduce himself and tell you a little bit about his background, who he is, so on and so forth, and what we can look forward to on It's Pro Time. And then we need to get into Mike's Endgame interview. Now, this is the very first Endgame interview where we have exposed who we're interviewing, and it's the very first Endgame interview that we have done in person so stay tuned Jonathan is coming up next oh are we recording are we on I think we're on John we're oh. good okay we're on all right uh -oh. ladies and gentlemen <laughs> no, no no go back behind the curtain <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls I am so amped to introduce you to arguably someone who is probably going to be your new favorite person. Please join me in welcoming John to the show. How are you, John? What's up, Samantha? I'm doing all right. Just uh, recovering from a big win this past nice. weekend. You know, my the lady was in town. We talked about mm -hmm. it earlier. So it's uh, all all's well. Back to normal. All we good. Playoff. We, yeah, we have playoffs on Tuesday and uh, busy, busy. But I'm just ha thank you so much for having me on and uh, for letting me be a part of this. I'm looking forward to it. Of course. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for agreeing to do this. So John is one half of the dynamic duo that you guys can look forward to getting to know better on our newest segment called It's Bro Time. I don't know yes. why I keep saying that. I, I think maybe in another life I was like a WWE announcer. I don't know, oh but God. I just feel like that kind of a title, it, it deserves that sort of a voice. So, um, this segment is going to be airing next Wednesday. It is going to be a regular segment, so you guys can look forward to hearing it often. Now, John, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, on the count of three, let's say where we met. One, two, three. Bumble. Bumble. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's so, funny? We but, talked about it, too, like uh, this baffling conundrum, you know, like I like called Bumble, you know, and and uh, well. and not, not even knowing that I was even on it. And I, I guess the... I got a notification on my phone. Like, I, I know I was on it. I deactivated it, and I don't know what happened or whatever. Um, get a, get an email. I, I just popped it up, and I was like, oh, shit. Well, someone's doing a podcast, and I sidebar. I have always wanted to do one, and I've talked about it with friends, ironically, for the past probably four or five years. And oh, here's, God. Here, yeah, here's a platform, and I said, you know what? Let me do this okay, interview with you. Let's do it. And uh, and see where it goes from there, and you know, you know, and then it parlayed into this, and you know, I couldn't be uh, any any happier with, uh, with you know, for, than, than joining, and I'm just happy. Like I said, I'm I'm stoked to be a part of this, and and also the fact that you know, like Kitless and I, the the dynamic we have without even meeting yet, it's freaking silly. A, it's, it's it's insane. It's like <laughs> it's, it, it's gonna be like Step Brothers 2.0. It's yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's gonna, I'm gonna be pretty take awesome. Screenshots of like parts of your conversation, and that's what I'm gonna <laughs> use for promo. When you two were talking about your favorite dinosaur, I'm like, I'm leaving. I can't. And Adriana and I. So just so you guys know, when I said this earlier, I, I actually said it on Microscope, which came out on Monday, that I have different group chats. I have a group chat for the whole company, but then I have different group chats for every segment of the show. 
and then for every show. So, you know, Adriana and I obviously have to be in the It's Bro Time group chat because we're managing the guys and scheduling Adult them supervision. and doing all this Let's stuff. be real what it is here. Yeah, Adult and supervision. so we're just sitting there and the two of you are going back and forth all week and you're sharing updates and I'm like, all I, you know, I asked you guys to make an agenda. Apparently no one is going to do it. You're just going to text a bunch of random shit in the group chat and I'm like, all right, fine. It- it's, it's hard, you know. It, it, I will say this with, with, with Bro Time, I think it's going to be one of those real time things where you know we get a lot for obviously in February, we're, we're looking at you know Major League Baseball spring training, the NFL drafts coming up in six weeks, um, the the college, you know, the men's college basketball, you know, national tournament's going to be coming up here in about I think in about a month or so. So mm-hmm. there's going to we're going to have to go, there, there'll be things that we, we cover for sure. But, um, you know, we're going to have to keep on with current news and 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 seeing what matriculates. So we, it's one of those things where, you know, you guys are flies in the wall in our conversation, but we're, mm-hmm. we're constantly <laughs> talking about things to do, things to cover. We might get a couple of segments within the segment. So a little Fine. bit of segment inception there, um, you know, like <laughs> whatever works. Whenever, whenever you whenever you're talking about sports and. And, 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 and men's interest, there's going to be a little bit of leeway we need to have to be more That's current. Fine. So now, yeah. guys, this is going to be awesome. We're going to we're going to cover all the bases. You know, uh, Kitlis and I are more than qualified to have an opinion on all these different things. Yep. And, and we're just looking forward to giving you guys something that you want to hear. And if you don't sure. think you want to hear it, you're going to want to hear it after this. And it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> That's an amazing sales pitch. But it's so true. I think that <laughs> The best. So what I really love about Dixon politics in general is that we are all truly friends. Like we are all real life friends. We weren't hired by a big network and sort of stuffed together and said, this is your co-host. Like these are people that we have real friendships with and histories with. So when we do go through these segments, which we try to keep as short and sweet as possible, this is really how we talk to each other. And I think that there's something about that that people really enjoy because they feel like they're kind of just hanging out with their friends, you know, shooting the shit, having a quick yeah. conversation, and that's that. So um, what you guys are going to hear after this little introduction with John is my endgame interview with Mike, whom I also met on Bumble. So Bumble, you know what? It didn't I, I ain't going to hate it. Me ultimately <laughs> uh, to find a husband, but it did lead me to you two bozos. And now... <laughs> Now I've got you on my podcast. So everything, you know, everything works out. So John, um, tell us quickly, what is your, your history with sports? Like, is there a particular, uh, sport that you're involved in more so than others? Talk about that. Absolutely. Uh, lifelong Rams fan, but I was raised here in New York city. We'll do, we'll talk about that during the episode. Uh, I currently am assistant coach, uh, for, ice hockey at a division three school in the New York metro area. Um, and I've been working in, in, in ice hockey for now, Jesus, full time for the last, uh, last seven years now. Seven so, years, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's been, it's been, a, it's been a wild ride. Uh, but like I said, growing up in New York, you follow everything, um, you know, basketball, football, baseball, hockey, a little bit of horse racing, a little bit of soccer, okay. you know, <laughs> look so. out. <laughs> we might cut, we, we have, we have a bevy of topics we're going to cover. Um, but just, you know, I'm, I'm one of those, just, my hope is that this becomes, uh, similar to what you hear, like a, like one of those barbershop talks, you know, we just mm-hmm. talk sports and opinions and, 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 and hopefully, you know, hopefully we, uh, we do something pretty cool with this. I, I, I have this really good feeling in the pit of my stomach that we're going to do something pretty cool with this. So the one no. pat on the back I will give to myself is I'm really, really good at connecting people that probably would not have met otherwise, but that is who true. are going to become lifelong friends and allies to each other. That is something that, is true. Yeah. that I'm very, very good at. So I think that I've got something so special in you and uh, Kitless individually, but I think together it's fucking dynamite. So John, yeah. again, thank you so much for raising your hand and don't forget to tune in next week for the premiere of, you want to say it? It's bro time. I think it's like <laughs> girth, right? It's bro time. There you go. I know everyone is really excited to hear Mike's Endgame interview, but I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to hear from one of the three co-hosts of our new segment, Game Over. So everyone, please join me in welcoming Ian. 
Hi, E. Well, hello, Samantha. <laughs> How's you. it going? It's going well. It's going well. Thank you for that nice introduction. Yeah. I never thought I'd see the day. I've been trying to convince Ian to come on Dixon Politics for months now, and he's like, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. But then the second you heard that we were going to do something about esports and gaming, and actually this was sort of a little bit your idea. Yeah. You know, I said, E, you got to be on the show. So why don't you tell everyone a little bit about you? You know, where are you from originally? How did you first get into video games? And, like, where is it taking you now at the age of 30? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a fantastic question, Samantha. <laughs> um, but, yes, initially, uh, video games, since I can remember. Uh, the original Nintendo was the first video game I've ever had. Uh-huh. Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt. Oh, uh, Duck Hunt! What are some other ones? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, I was obsessed. 007. That was Nintendo 64. I don't care. See? That's why <laughs> so you, good. you got me on. I know these things. That's Nintendo 64. <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right. So, originally started with Nintendo. Loved it. Had an older brother that I would play with. Uh, but it's funny. I had parents who were anti-video games, so I was stuck with a Nintendo for years and years. That's why it's funny. <laughs> I missed I missed out on the whole Sega Genesis. I missed out on the whole Super Nintendo. I missed out on the whole Nintendo 64 thing. Jeez. But somehow, I, my brother, thank God for my older brother, convinced my parents to get a PlayStation, the original uh -huh, PlayStation. Okay. So once that came back on board, uh, that was most likely middle school. Once mm -hmm. I came back on board, that's I, I fell right back in love okay. with that. So now here you are. You're 30 years old. You live and work in New York City. Yeah. Now, what do you do when you... Because for those of you who don't know, Ian and I work together. We work for the same company. Um, and we work together at WISP. So you just can't get enough of each other. <laughs> but you leave the office here. You, you go home. You order yourself some food. And then what do you do every night? <laughs> well, it's actually funny you ask that. Is There's a few friends from home. We call them drop nights. So typically right now, depending upon who you speak to, it's Wednesday and Thursday nights after work. Uh, two of my buddies get off work. We text each other. We say we're trying to drop tonight, and everybody says yes. Oh, my God. So what that means is, <laughs> in layman's terms, dropping is dropping out of a bus, dropping out of whatever. Uh, and the game that's specifically associated with that is Fortnite. And if you haven't heard of Fortnite, you've been living under a rock for the past two years. Oh, my God. And so then, all right. So that's and what you I did. watch Twitch. And I'm for some reason, I am obsessed with Twitch. I don't understand it. I find it's more entertaining than watching trashy TV shows okay. on Bravo or TLC or even MTV hey, now. Hey, don't doubt, I'm not hey, knocking. I'm don't not, knock Bravo. We have Darren Karp on I'm the not, show on episode hey, 8. How dare you? I, Darren's going to hear this. Darren, never gonna I talk to you apologize. Again. That was just me <laughs> stating myself. But So are you excited about working with Will, who's our creative director, and then Stephen, who we brought in from the UK? Absolutely. You uh, guys in your group chat this week. It's yeah, been quite a it, time. It's, <laughs> it's been interesting. It's uh, I've, I'm super excited to actually meet the guys in person uh, and speak with them. But being uh, speaking behind the scenes in the group chat and hearing what they have to say in their history with video games and what they're doing professionally, on how they're doing. It's actually extremely impressive for me is we have our own professional jobs, but on the side, we're all still very much into this video game esports mentality. Uh -huh. So I'm just ready to run and hit the ground running with these guys, and I'm super excited to see where it goes. Yeah. For those of you who are wondering, Ian is single. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it's not because you love video games. I think it's no, because it's you, yes, you're that married clear. to your job. <laughs> make that clear. It's yeah. not because I'm always playing video games. <laughs> well, Ian, thank you very much for finally stepping forward. Keep your uh, your ears peeled and tell everyone March 6th is the premiere of Game Over. And then, of course, next week we do have the premiere of It's Pro Time. So, Ian, thank you again. We're looking forward to getting to know you better. Thank you, Sam. All right, everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dicks and Politics, a little bit of a special edition episode of Endgame, only because I am sitting here with a gentleman that I dated for like a hot second. We were attracted to each other for a hot second and then decided, Meh, we'll just be friends. So please join me and wait, are we exposing your name? Sure, go for it. Please join me in welcoming Mike to the studios. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Mike, this is, okay, so... Why don't you tell the people how we met? Sure. Um, it was on Bumble. Uh, it was the first go around for me on Bumble. I think that was 2015. Keep me I honest. think so. 2015? No, no, no. Oh, I don't know. I can't count. Yeah, it's all right. Numbers are hard. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst some of the things. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it was my first go around too, and um, we matched. And so the way that Bumble works, for those of you who don't know, like, 
the what is it? The guys express interest in the girls, and then if it's a mutual thing, the girl has to start the conversation. Correct. Did I open our dialogue with a GIF? Uh, I don't believe so, but then again, I can't remember what I ate this morning for breakfast, okay. so going so I to ask if I was special is going to be something hard. Well, we so we chatted for a little while. Yep. We went out. We mm-hmm. honestly went to dinner on actually the hottest night in the entire world. Do you remember that? Yeah, I sweated through my shirt in about 30 seconds walking outside. Really, really attractive. And we went out to dinner like three blocks away, and by the time we got there, I think both of us had melted. Yep. um, Completely into our shoes. But, no, it was a lot of fun, and I think ultimately, I mean, you and I think we wanted different stuff. Yeah. Um, You know, the timing was off, but we were really smart because we decided to connect on LinkedIn. (laughs) And, yep, we sure did. And I want to commend you because you know 2018 was a really rough year for me. Do you want? Would you like more whiskey? Oh no, I'm all right. Thank okay. you. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we are having cocktails. Full disclosure. Um, but you know, 2018 was a rough year for me, and I, I really needed a lot of sort of encouragement and whatever. And uh, anytime I posted an update about my job, you were right there to congratulate me, sign into my DMs. I really appreciate that. I was going to say the way that you made it seem a little bit less creepy than that, more <laughs> like support, but um, but yeah, no, that's um, that's something that was important to me just because you were a genuinely good person and even More. when, still are, <laughs> I've met off of that, mm-hmm. um, but even when things kind of, uh, things kind of went down, it was just more for me that like I, I knew that I wasn't in a place where I was ready to date and one thing kind of to share more for the girls, I don't think I ever told you this, which this is now a fun story for you. Oh no. So I got into work uh, two days after our date. We hadn't really talked and I got uh, something dropped on me by one of my bosses that I was going to be losing a lot more free time. And I kind of sat there at my desk and said, this isn't fair to even, you know, start trying to to do something i wasn't happy where i was with my job with my body with a lot of different things so i i did the semi shithead thing at least i tried to end it where i said hey i can't do this right now i'm not in the proper headspace about 20 minutes later my mail guy comes around oh and drops off a card on my desk usual hey mike how are you what's up how's it going Open the card. It's from Sam thanking me for the date. To which I sat there and I was like, oh, that's the biggest asshole moment that I had. <laughs> like, just because it was, like, such a genuine good act. And I, like, I, like afterwards, it was, like, 20 minutes later. And I'm like, ask one of my best friends, like, shit, do I send a text? Like, oh, thank you for the card. I appreciate that. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, so. you, uh, you, you pulled a little, a little bit of a ghosting on me for a couple of days there. Um... No, it was not Mike. It was not for one day. Oh, because the mail works like that, where it's the next day it would get delivered. So. No, it, you, you ghosted me for a couple of days. But that's all right, because it's all good. You know, and I think when you finally did come around and say, like, hey, I'm just not in a place to do this right now, my only response to you was, like, dude, I just, all you had to say was that. And there was no, like, swearing. There was no, oh, fuck yeah. you, go fuck yourself. It was like, dude, all you had to do is let me know. We're all good. And, and that was that. Here we are. Yeah, and here we are. So... I want to talk to you a little bit about your experience sure. with dating in New York City because it is quite, quite a time. What, what are you like, if you had to just live in your fantasy world and click your heels three times, what are you looking for? So right now I'm in a much better place that I am looking for a relationship. Um, it was harder at first for me uh, just because... I was, uh, like I was saying, unhappy with work, unhappy with life, that I I knew that I wasn't going to be anything but, and it sounds dumb to say, but like a burden to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want that. I don't want to be that person that sits there and complains to somebody like, I had a great day. How was yours? Sucked. Like, yeah. no, it just takes that. a year out of the room. So I completely pulled back from dating for about a year and a half. Good. And uh, got to a good place for me. So, yeah, that's uh, that's now what I'm searching for. That's awesome. So what attracts you to, to a mate, to a woman? You know, usually I go for trouble first. Um, a little sense of danger. (laughs) That's, that's normal. No, um, (laughs) for me, it's always, uh, physically, of course, eyes, eyes are something that I always go for that it's, you know, it's your drawing point. Um, personality wise, somebody who doesn't take themselves too serious. I, I hate, 
when I have to always be on like serious mode, mm -hmm. I prefer to joke and have fun. And you joke constantly. I don't take myself serious. I know like you why don't. should you know? Why should I? So mm -hmm. it's it's just it's how I operate and it's what I want to do. So mm -hmm. um, if you happen to be able to watch a game with me or quote the same movies or TV shows as me, like hell yeah, man, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, I remember you put me through my paces with that because you would throw these random quotes out at me and I'm like, shit, I know where this is from, but I can't put my finger on it. He's not going to think I'm cool. He's never going to talk to me. So, all right. So you're looking for all this. And I think that what you're looking for is reasonable and it's it's out there for mm -hmm. sure. But what are you actually finding? Uh, it's So I kind of said earlier, this is my second time getting back on Bumble and uh it's a lot different this time, and I'm by no means sitting here patting myself on the back going sick brag, but it's a lot easier. Weird flex, but okay. I, right. It's a lot easier now that I've, like, lost weight and I'm in, like, a better place that, like, it's not, okay, I'm going to swipe 150 times and get one match. Like, mm -hmm. it's, and again, this sounds like a total oh, complete great. brag. Oh, great. Is that how we matched? No, no, no. <laughs> you definitely, it was all the personality. That's what it was. All right. Um, no, it's... Uh, it's a lot easier now and for me it's it's been tough because it's hard to keep someone's attention nowadays that I've been kind of seeing this girl for about a month and a half now and it gets to the point where I, I'm not somebody that needs to talk to someone all day and yeah. never will be um, simple how's your day kind of bullshit like that but when it goes like a day and a half where it's like damn I didn't hear from her but then it's like all turned back on it just, it's at a point where I'm like, why am I going to continue to do this with myself? So that's, that's the issue that I think I'm going up against. Yeah. And a lot of guys are going up against is you're always thinking the next thing is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Like you, what you have now, oh, it's great. You know, this person's awesome. I wonder what I could get if I continue to keep swiping, continue to keep doing something. So yeah. I think that's, that's one of the biggest problems out there and one okay. of the biggest things I'm going on. Just against. keeping conversations going, keeping the attention. You know, it, I think truly that it only takes maybe a few like points to really figure out whether or not you can have a conversation with someone. Sure. And then you sort of hope, like, oh, geez, well, I hope that he's not going to in 10 seconds send me a fucking dick pic because that's the last goddamn thing I want or need. Usually that's, like, the second text mm -hmm. just to get that out of the way. Yeah. Like, of course. Thank you. Know, you. Right? Thank you. <laughs> but, no, it's I, I do think that there's a little bit of a disconnect. And the reason why we wanted to start Endgame as a segment was because we felt like there was such a huge disconnect between like what people wanted versus what they were actually finding but then like are people actually putting in the work you know we only hear about dating typically from a woman's perspective and sure. we're always out there complaining about lack of communication oh they don't want to commit oh lack of monogamy so on <coughs> and so forth but i wanted to hear it from a guy's point of view and i think you're not the first man that said that to me you know um yeah. i've had a lot of guy friends that are like hey i was right in the middle of this great conversation with this woman, and then suddenly she went silent for two days, you know? And now, at this point, if she does get back to me, like, I'm not even really interested in speaking with her because I'm just trying to figure out, right off the bat, whether or not we can actually have a conversation. Right, and then, by that point, it kind of makes you feel like the best <coughs> player. I'm like, oh, yeah, that guy was nice enough. Like, might as well go back to that one. And Yeah, that's not cool. Right, exactly. I'm a main course, I'm not an appetizer. <laughs> Daddy! Okay, so... What what sort of dating cultural things have you noticed, especially here in New York City? Are there any that you've noticed, you know, like, that are positive, that are negative? Talk to me a little bit about that. I mean, the positive is there's so many people mm -hmm. um, directly around here, so it's easy to meet people, but it's hard to connect with them. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's kind of the biggest thing that I would say is... Um, it's just, it's hard to make that time to have that connection. Um, I kind of touched on it earlier with everyone keeps hoping that the next thing's better. Like, you have great, you want greater, um, which it's great to strive for in life, um, mm -hmm. to use the same word to go but after that. But is the grass but, always greener on the other side? Right, That's exactly. debatable. Exactly. Um, so those are the kind of things that I'd like to see change, is that mentality of, you know, what have you done for me lately, and what could be waiting for me on the other side of the fence. I'd love that to go away. The um, only person who should be asking that is Paula Abdul. What? Well, <laughs> That's it? Dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, little pop culture reference for you there. And then for me, I, I think 
everyone carries around this mentality that it's so hard to date in New York. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, you go into the first date and you're just like, oh, it's so hard to date here. So you're already coming in with like this negative attitude. It's like, if you're if you're bringing that to the table and you have that predisposition, like I understand people are shitty. I understand mm-hmm. things that have been tough. I understand people have been through the runaround. Like I'm not always a stand up guy, but at the same end of the day, like I had one of my really good friends the other day told me that they were talking and they were talking about like the the ideal gentleman. And she was like, yeah, we like both said you like at the same time. And that's what I always strive to be is I want to break the norm. I want to mm-hmm. buck the trend and I want to prove that like chivalry isn't dead. It yeah. still very much exists. Yeah. Having said that, mm-hmm. that gets expensive as shit. Let mm-hmm. me tell you, going mm-hmm. out and trying to date and being the stand-up guy and like pay for like the first meal, dude, it like, whew, yeah. taps into that account real quick. Well, you remember, didn't I pay for dessert or something? Wasn't you it? You tried like, to and I refused. And you fucking wouldn't let me. Because that's like, <laughs> the guy pays. I'm sorry. Multiple. But is that a turn on when a girl just offers? Legitimately, yes. Yeah. When, when any kind of offers made or like the reach, like if you see the reach, mm-hmm. then it wasn't expected. And that like, that's mm-hmm. a big thing for me. Yeah. I've been told that when I used to go out on tons of dates, I would always just want something to offer and just be prepared that I might have to split the bill because not every guy's going to pay Yeah. You don't want to expect that exactly. someone's picking up the tab. That feels rude. Yeah. yeah. And every yeah. guy's always been like, wow, that's really hot that you offered because mm-hmm. then I know that you're not like a spoiled little brat or expecting yeah. something. But at the same time on the other side of it, as a female, I think it's always nice when the guy insists mm-hmm. to yeah. pay because mm-hmm. I think it kind of shows that he does want to be able to, you know, be the supportive one and take care of you and do whatever. I know it's kind of a lot to read into on a dinner date, but... But at the same time, that's that's what it shows. Yeah, and exactly. Right. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. that's that's my mentality when I do it. Is, yeah. It's like, yeah. this is how it's supposed to be and this is why I'm trying to do this. Right. To show you, hey, like I'm... Not full of shit. Right, exactly. Halfway full of shit. Well, if we have made it to our second date, I already knew where I wanted to fucking take you, so you missed out on my favorite Arepa place down in Little (laughs) East Village. (laughs) It's like you have to wait for like five hours to get in, but it's so worth it because the food is so good. And you were going to do that again in the summer, so we were just going to stand there and sweat for five hours. Yes, so I I wonder, um, 2018 was all about female empowerment Mm -hmm. and the Me Too movement and all these, what we believe are really wonderful movements forward towards equality and respect and so on and so forth. Did that impact the way that you decided to approach dating once you did sort of get your head back into it? Um, To be fully transparent, no. Um, It didn't at all because... I've always had very strong, positive female influences in my life. Mm -hmm. My mother, grandmother's aunt, uh, my aunt's the funniest woman that I've ever met in my life. And is the reason that, like, I refuse to take myself serious and take life serious. Mm -hmm. is because she is very much the same way that I am. Um, I... I mean, I'm sure I carried around, like, a little bit of, like, the the macho, like, typical guy. I mean, Mm -hmm. like, come on. 30 with a beard and marketing. Like, I'm hitting every cliche that you could ask for right now. So, um, mm-hmm. it's just, for Did me... Did it affect any of your guy friends? Was there any sort of, you know, th- were there any conversations that were happening amongst you guys, like, um, maybe not necessarily even with dating, but just the way that you carried yourselves in the workplace? Because I, the reason I ask is because I think that it did sort of seep into everyone's minds this year, but also, like, I was, I remember just hearing some really sort of off, beat things like, oh, well, you know, now I won't even look at a woman that I work with. I won't even, you know, get water from the water cooler at the same time as her. And I found that to be sort of disappointing. So I'm just wondering, you know, a 30-year-old guy in New York City, you work for, you have a really sexy job, I'm not going to lie. Um, My you job know. thanks you and says keep your hands yeah. to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, was this a conversation that you and your friends were having? I've kind of always tried to surround myself with like-minded people and men and women who carry the same kind of ideals. I mean, yes, there's going to be one or two people who you don't agree with on a political scale, on a, you know, uh, equality scale, but I don't think my circle of friends had any issues or batted any eyes. In mm-hmm. fact, if anything, we were standing there going like, yeah, no kidding about no damn shit. time. Like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Like, it is actually 2018. Like, what are we doing? Right. So yeah. there's there's a lot of backwards things in the world. That's um, really good. There's a lot of backwards 
thinkings, there's a lot of backwards cultures. It's it's changing for the good. Yeah. And I will be one person who stands up always with with anyone who wants to fight. That's wonderful. I always got that vibe from you. I never felt, um, I think one of the first things that attracted me to you was that I, I knew right off the bat within mere like hours of starting to speak with you, even over text, I knew that no matter what happened, you would respect me. Of course. You know, so whatever it was that you were doing, I want you to know that that came across very, very clearly to me. Appreciate that. And I will also, I don't know if I told you this, you were the only guy that I actually like went on a date with. These two. Uh, yeah. yeah. That bubble time period was the best time period it was ever. Funny. It was the worst of times. It was hilarious. Yeah, cool. It was I remember, so funny. Oh my God. I remember her sending like, Messages to people be like, my friend thinks you're cute. Like, message me if you're interested. It was, it was <laughs> well, weird. actually, we really wait, no. Them. I did lie. There was one other gentleman that I met up with, but not in a romantic way. It was more so like a, hey, I'm here from out of town kind of thing. Like, where should I go? And I was like, you know what? I'm headed down to bathtub gin. You want to go? And so at one point he did, not in a romantic way, but more in just like a warm, friendly, trying to make me comfortable way. Yeah. He put his hand on my leg for like a second and I started texting these girls. I'm like, he has his hand on my leg. He's going to feel my fucking spanks. This is it. This is the end for me. And of course it was the middle of summer. So oh, wait, you know, he's not the guy that almost felt your spanks? No, no, he's, not the, no, no. he's not the spanks guy. Actually, it was funny. I don't know if I ever I'm told you this. No, you're not the spanks guy. But you are the crop top guy. Because crop top I will tell you that I got dressed for our date and I was wearing, you know, my little black, like super V-neck crop top that I have from Fashion Nova. Uh-huh. And then remember when I was really thin so I could pair it with that beautiful chiffon green skirt that I have. So I go in and I change into this outfit and I come out and my CEO at the time was like, you are not going on a first date dressed like that. I'm like, but this, but this is how everyone dresses nowadays. I think this is cool. This is what the Instagram girls are doing. And he's like, no, you're going to give the guy the wrong idea. So he actually walked me downstairs and stood in the lobby, which is why I made you come to me. And oh, no. like, cause he wanted to get a glimpse of you. And then he texted me and he's like, all right. He looks like a nice doesn't have any guy. bodies in his basement. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, but he looks like a nice enough guy. Have fun and text me when you get home. I'm like, all right, all right, because my old CEO is like a dad to me. But um, yeah, you were cropped up, guy. So all right, for when I think of you, Mike, I automatically see like if I close my eyes, I can see like kids. I can see a really cool house with a huge living room that, like, all your friends and family gather in and spend time together. I see you finding a better place, like, in your career, which I think you're on your way um, to, to finding that. And I just see a lot of really, really good things. Ultimately, Mike, what I'm trying to say is I, I think you're a catch. I do. I appreciate that. So... If a lady wanted to find herself in your good graces, someone who, without being coached by society in the 2018, 2017, 2019 era, if someone wanted to actually score a really genuinely good guy like you, what are the three best things that she can do right from the jump? Um, be herself. That's always number one. I hate when you have to put on the front. Um, buck the norm too like don't don't just follow the the normal like where are you from where did you go to school like give me something random I had somebody once ask me fuck Mary kill waffles pancakes and french toast and that like that completely changed it because it's like you know what that's that's a great opener um, it's I'm trying fantastic. to think of what I would pay. Yeah, what would I pay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the stakes there's are only, high. <laughs> there's only one choice. You marry French toast because pancakes suck. They're, okay, we're going to get into this right now. The looks Corbin that I'm getting from across pancakes. the room. Corbin loves pancakes. Look at him. Okay, okay. but wait. But wait. <laughs> let's like, start oh, with I would say I want to marry let's, a waffle right now. Yeah, I do. I want to marry a waffle too. Do you have a favorite pancake or is it like you like original straight up normal pancakes? He mm. loves straight up normal pancakes. I love straight up normal. However, my mo- I have not made it because I'm too scared to make my mom's pancakes, because that's what I, because my mom's from the South, and so she sure. always, we're very, like, home-cooked based in our house. Um, 
So yeah, if it's if it's if it's a good home home cooked uh, pancake, I'm there for it. See, my my whole thing was, and now you just kind of killed it and torpedoed it. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're saying, you're welcome. saying pancakes are easy. I'm saying you're it's... You're saying pancakes are the slut of breakfast. I'm saying pancakes <laughs> are the most accessorized breakfast entree that there is. It's always chocolate They're chip, basic. blueberry, like, That's nobody a, likes straight up normal French pancakes. French toast, too. You've never heard How of stuffed ever, French toast. No, but... There are things that are French toast flavored. There's nothing that's waffle or pancake flavored. What if we're French loving? Are we loving what about original. Dutch babies? Is that a pancake? Because I don't count I'd that. marry me a Dutch baby. That's a fancy ass pancake. It is, but I don't. I wouldn't count that. It's not like a crepe because I'll be honest. I don't know what the hell a Dutch oh, baby is. Oh, it's like a it's like a pancake souffle. Yeah. I would lie to you, but I respect you too much as a human. But I can't do that, so I'm just gonna shake my head on it. Yeah, there Thank it you. is. Anyways, I say Mary Waffles. The rest of the girls in the room agree to that. Yeah. Mm. I love a waffle. I, I would. Do. I don't know if I would offer. kill off French toast or French pancakes. Toast I think that's a French hard toast. Toast. French French toast. toast. I think that's a hard toast. statement. I like. No. I like a good I like French, French toast, toast. But the thing is, is French toast is also very easy to fuck up. Like, True. you can sometimes have, like, too much egg, and you're like, yeah. excuse me, get the fuck out of here. Or, or sometimes they're, like, or too whatever. mushy, or sometimes they're too sweet. Like, French toast is one of those things that's very finicky, but a waffle, on the other hand, Consistent. you mix it up, you Consistent. put it right in the thing, mm. you close it, you open and it. And you can do a lot with a waffle, too. You can yeah. make it savory. Well, but that's that. Savory. But leaving it in the thing too long, that just comes down to time management. Sure. Yeah. You know? That yeah, comes wrong. down to, all right, to so, timing. Well, we all can just... The consensus is no one agrees with you that we want to marry French toast. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. It's more for me. No one here is the right person for you. Oh, what yeah. are we talking about again? <laughs> Who the hell knows? All right. So be yourself. Be original. Be original. Have a sense of humor. Don't take yourself yeah. too seriously. Throw random Enjoy things life. out. Don't um, try to be sort of that perfect woman because what does that even mean anymore? Just right. come yeah. as you are and, and have a laugh. Yeah. For me, I... have I've dated all different types of women, and it's it's all personality. Okay. All right, now I have a very important question. Yes. Could I still get it? Ooh. Of course you could. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Mike, thank you very much totally for joining pleasure. us on Dicks and Politics for this very special little blurb of an episode. I am sorry that you were standing outside my door for 15 minutes and that I didn't answer. It was and 20, then, but who's counting? I'm sorry. Oh, and then man. when I did open the door, I thought you were an undercover cop coming to scream mm. at me. And I thought that your umbrella that you were carrying was like a, a baton, you know, the, the, the police baton. I was very... But you're here now, and I'm tickled, and it's great to see you. You look fantastic. You've lost a lot of weight. But you know what, Mike? You caught my eye even when you did have a little extra weight on you, and I think it's all about personality, how you carry yourself, and more importantly, how you make me feel. And you always make me feel sexy and respected, and I really appreciate that. So thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Dicks and Politics. Digestible and unfiltered content about men, money, and moments. New episodes every Wednesday. Don't forget to subscribe.